Well, if you can't be good, be lucky. Hello everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's another review of an Oxford game. It was a huge sellout crowd at the Kassam Stadium tonight for a last 16 game against Sunderland in the Carabao Cup. Both these sides being in the same division would have taken it as a great opportunity to get into the quarterfinals. It's the first time in God knows how many years Oxford would have got in there, over 20 I think. Five changes for Oxford United, two of them enforced. Cadden and Brannigan are both injured. They were replaced by Baptiste and Long. Elliot Moore came in at the back for Massinho. Taylor started up front instead of Mackey. And Rob Hall started instead of Mark Sykes. Good to see Robbie Hall starting again. Unfortunately, ex Oxford's Chris Maguire was suspended for the game. Would have been nice to see him. I'm sure he would have got an interesting reaction from the fans. Goalkeeper John McLaughlin came back in goal after Burge was injured in Sunderland's last game. He had recently been dropped and he's now brought back in. Isn't he a Scotland international or something? What's going on there, Sunderland? But still a very strong Sunderland side. And as I said, this game was very much a coin flip. A lot at stake. Big atmosphere. Last three games between these sides ended 1-1. So, gee, wonder what the score's going to be. So somehow, some way, Oxford got through this game, folks. They weren't very good, and Sunderland really should have won. But it ended in full time. Oxford United won, Sunderland won, with Oxford winning 4-2 on penalties. This does seem to be a common theme in games where Oxford take a little bit of time to warm up. Uh, they were sluggish for the first 10 minutes or so against Rochdale. That was the same here. Sunderland had all the early play, and it took Oxford a while to get going. But they did strike first in this game after 24 minutes, but it came, weirdly, from Sunderland's best chance. McNulty got in behind the Oxford defence, he hit the post, and literally from that break, Oxford went up the other end and scored. It was a great move involving Taylor, involving Henry, involving Fossu. He eventually cut the ball back to Robbie Hall, who curled it in from the edge of the box to make it 1-0 to Oxford. Of all the people you could want to score, it would be Rob Hall. Great moment for him on his road to recovery after after God knows how many injuries. Let's hope that gives him the confidence he needs now to really push on this season. And Oxford were a lot better after that point and they deserve to go in 1-0 up. Sunderland are a little bit disappointed in the way they played. They played very direct, um, which was quite easy to deal with. They did still create some chances, but the best chance they created came from when they actually did play some football and it really should have been 1-1. Max Power somehow missed from about eight yards out. It was a simple, simple chance from a great move but Sunderland really cut Oxford open and Oxford breathed a sigh of relief and went in 1-0 at half time. So this wasn't like many Oxford games, folks, where we come out in the second half and it's just business as usual and we take over. This was a very tight game and it remained tight all the way through. Oxford didn't create much in the second half. Their best chance came to Baptiste. He really should have scored. That was really Oxford's only good bit of football they played in the second half because from that point, from about the 60th minute onwards, they just sat deeper and deeper and deeper and Sunderland got better as the game went on. Sunderland chances were racking up, they were racking up corners, they were racking up possession. It really just looked like a matter of time before they'd scored. You're just hoping that Oxford could somehow hang on to it. They just, for some reason, Oxford just looked sloppy. They were like second best to everything. Even like balls in the box were dropping to Sunderland players. It was real clock watching for a good portion of this game. And unfortunately, Oxford couldn't hold on to the 1-0 lead. It did end 1-1, which should be expected because it always ends 1-1 between Oxford and Sunderland recently. It was McNulty that got the ball. It was one of the many corners that Sunderland had. Oxford failed to deal with it. It bobbled around in like the six-yard box. Oxford had a good chance to clear it. It may have been Taylor or Henry in there, and it just went to McNulty, and he had an easy finish to put it past Eastwood. And that was 1-1. And really, it only looked like one winner from that point onwards. And indeed it was. It was very nervy. Probably very much sums up Sunderland's season of having a lot of pressure but not being able to take advantage of it. And really, Sunderland should have had a stonewall penalty in the 86th minute. It was O'Neill who won the ball in the box and he'd got the better side of Long. And from replays, you can see that Long clearly fouls him and how the referee hasn't given it. Very, very harsh on Sunderland that. But it ended up 1-1. Somehow Oxford scraped through for a penalty shootout. And let's see how they got on. So the penalties were in front of the Oxford male stand. Henry and Scott Ford scored the first two for Oxford. Power and O'Neill scored the first two for Sunderland. Fossu then drilled in the third for Oxford. It came to Will Grigg. You would put your house on Will Grigg scoring from the penalty spot. But he blazed it over the bar. All the momentum now with Oxford. John Massinho steps up. His first kick of the game. He scores. It comes down to McNulty. 
If he, if he scores, Oxford go into the fifth penalty. If he misses, it's all over. He didn't miss, but Eastwood saved it. Well done, Simon Eastwood. Hero on the day after so many bad comments about you recently. Good to see you getting the save. And Oxford win. And Oxford go through to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. Oh my God, this is so good. What a time to be alive. Think of all the teams we could play. And even if we could get like a Crawley or a Colchester, I'm not sure we've won that game. And we got a good chance of getting into the semis. So as I said at the start, if you can't be good, then be lucky. And Oxford certainly relied on their luck today, as they have done throughout this tournament also. If you think of the late goals we got against Peterborough and against Millwall too. Oh boy, Sunderland, you really should have won this game. You, you caused us the most problems of any side um, that we've played in a long, long time. And you certainly showed why you should be one of the front runners in League One this season. But that all doesn't matter now because it's Oxford who go through in front of a full house at the Kassam Stadium. In some ways, it's really good to see a game like that. It had all the drama of football. It had the joy of Oxford taking the lead. And then that fear and panic of watching Oxford hasn't been there over the last three weeks. So... It was kind of good to feel that again. It was really nervy in these last few moments. You could really sense the tension in the, in the crowd and the relief when we finally won the penalty shootout. We move on to another big game on Saturday against Portsmouth. The injury list and the tiredness of the players is cranking up. So let's hope we can put in a good effort there and get a really good result. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Give us a like if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content and hit that notify bell so you don't miss any more videos. I will be back for another review very soon. And remember, if you're looking for detailed football analysis, you're probably in the wrong place.